So recall in chapter one how we constructed the index for simple documents of this kind. Right after the normalization or the linguistic pre-processing stage, we had a, C a stream of normalized tokens which were sorted by doc IDs because we are assuming that we are assigning documents IDs in increasing order. The first document we see is assigned a doc ID of one and so on. So this stream is sorted by doc IDs initially, but at the end of the indexing phase, we are going to have this stream sorted by terms instead of doc IDs. So they will be sorted with doc IDs if the if the if the terms are the same. So the term is going to be the primary key as we had discussed and the document ID is going to be the secondary key. So this stream will be primarily sorted with uh, in accord according to the term and secondarily according to the doc ID. And this sorting step was something we were able to do in main memory in chapter one because this entire stream fits into main memory. So you can use your standard sorting algorithms um, quick sort, insertion sort, merge sort and so on to uh, sort that stream. But now we have a hundred million items to sort. Well actually you can say 160 million because you know duplicates are removed somewhere in the middle of this stage. But we have approximately more than a hundred million items. And since we have assumed that the average number of bytes per token is about 4.5. If we have a hundred million items, well, let's look at, we'll look at the space in a few slides. I don't want to do this here because this will be repeated. Um, so this is where we'll do the calculation. But basically what you're going to just see is that this index construction does not scale for such larger corpora because we can't stuff this entire stream into main memory. We can't do this sorting entirely in main memory. So how do we then construct an index for such collections or larger collections than even RCV1? So we have to take into account the hardware constraints we just discussed. Okay. That means instead of looking at the number of computational operations, which is what we ordinarily look at when we try to analyze the complexity of algorithms, because we assume that all our data is in main memory. So we try to just minimize the number of operations. But now if our data is going to be resident on disk, then the running time of any sorting algorithm is going to be dependent on the, um, the number of disk transfers that are made. The processing that is done in main memory is going to be of minor consequence because the disk transfer rates are, the disk transfer times are dominant over the time it takes to process, a, you know, the data in main memory. So we're going to try to minimize the number of disk seeks instead of trying to minimize the number of operations. Okay, that's how things change when you look at data that is stored on the disk. Now let's not worry about uh, compression right now because we're going to look at compression in chapter 5. But again we're going to assume that this stream of normalized tokens is something that's generated by parsing every document in the corpus one at a time. And the other thing you have to keep in mind is that the postings list for any term are incomplete until the end. What this means is that if I start, so let's say this is my whole corpus. Okay, The first document that I parse is going to be assigned a doc ID of 1. Second document I parse is going to be assigned a doc ID of 2 and so on. Now if there are n documents in the corpus, what this point is saying is that until I have reached the end of this entire parsing phase, until I have parsed every single document in the corpus, 
the postings list for any term in the dictionary is going to be incomplete because it's possible I mean take any term in the dictionary right it's possible that the term may occur in the very last document so if it occurs in the very last document I'll be gen you know the occurrence of that term in the last document will generate an additional posting in the postings list for that term right so I can't decide after parsing just half the documents that some of my postings lists are complete now because those terms may appear in future documents down the line in which case we'll need to append and we will need to insert additional entries into those postings lists. Now also recall that we said that the normalized tokens can be thought of as ordered pairs of the form term comma dog id pairs. Okay. Now doc IDs here can be stored in four bytes. Why is that? Because we have about 800,000 documents. So we need about 800,000 doc IDs and those can be easily encoded in four bytes. They can't be encoded in two bytes but they can be encoded in four bytes because we can encode about four billion uh, we can store about four billion integers in this range. So we'll need about four bytes for the uh, for storing the doc ID and for terms we are going to assume that uh, how much space do we need to store a term? Well if we store the string itself then for some ordered pairs the you know we may need to store uh, you know a large number of bytes for other ordered pairs we may need to store a smaller number of bytes. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert, we're going to also assign term IDs to terms. And that's because if we assign term IDs to terms, again if you go back to this slide, we have about 400,000 terms in total. So if we have about 400,000 terms, we need about 400,000 term IDs, which can again be encoded in four bytes. If we try to directly write down the terms in the in these ordered pairs, then we know that the average size of a term is more than four bytes, right? So we'll be saving space by storing term IDs instead of the terms themselves. Okay, so we'll save this mapping from terms to term IDs separately, and we'll work with term IDs and document IDs. So that means each ordered pair will take about 8 bytes. Okay. So this says 12 bytes, you can actually make this 8 bytes. So at 8 bytes per non-positional postings entry, okay, consisting of a term ID and a doc ID, forget about this, how many, how much of space is this entire stream of normalized uh, ordered pairs going to take? We have about 100 million of these. It, we have more than a hundred million of these uh, postings or, or entries or ordered pairs which are going to be converted into postings and each of them takes up about eight bytes. So hundred million times eight is about 800 million bytes which is about 0.8 gigabytes. So this is the amount of data that needs to be sorted and you can say that this data can be sorted in main memory because you know main memory sizes are of the order of a few gigabytes nowadays. So we can do this in memory uh, today but if we move to larger corpus, if we move to a larger corpus like for example all the 150 years of newswire of the New York Times then this, um, this space is going to grow up, grow by orders of magnitude and then we will no more be able to save or store this entire uh, sequence of ordered pairs in main memory. So we'll have to store some of the results uh, or some of the data on disk. So we can't use the same index construction algorithm for larger collections because if we try doing that, right, uh, I am assuming here that you guys are familiar with uh, virtual memory so which means that the operating system, so you, you can theoretically work with an array of size 100 million 
where each element of the array is 8 bytes long because the operating system is going to give the processor the illusion that there is that much amount of memory available whereas in reality the RAM uh, the size of the RAM is uh, going to be smaller at least it's going to be smaller for this kind of a corpus so how does the operating system implement this illusion well it stores the, the, the data is actually going to be stored on disk but the moment the program addresses a particular location the operating system is going to bring that particular data, uh, piece of data into main memory and then hand it over to the program to, uh, so that the program can work on it. But if you store all the, the entire data on disk and if your sorting algorithm is accessing random you know sort of elements from disk then every time we need to operate on one of these hundred million records we'll need to fetch it from disk and that's going to be too many disk seeks so we can't this the, the the algorithm we discussed earlier is impractical and so we need something called an external sorting algorithm so, so sorting algorithms that we uh, that you're generally familiar with if you've done a data structures course they're called internal sorting algorithms because the all the data is stored internally in main memory external sorting algorithms are those where the data is stored external to the main memory that is it's stored on disk so how do we adapt this uh, internal sorting algorithm that we saw in chapter one to do external sorting so as I said uh, in the previous slide also um, if we parse and build postings entries one document at a time and then try to do the sorting we are going to end up spending potentially years of time if you just do the calculations if you have a hundred million records and if you assume uh, n log n an order of n log n time for running the sorting algorithm and that and, and if you assume that every time you need to do a comparison during your sorting you'll need to do a disk seek that means you'll need to do n log n disk seeks and if you take uh, the typical value of a disk seek time which was a few milliseconds and if you multiply it with hundred million times log of hundred million the amount of time you'll need to the, the algorithm will take to terminate will be you know several years so that's clearly impractical so now we're going to move to the external sorting algorithm. Any questions so far? Uh, 